be ready me oh spirit me oh i'm gonna let your spirit lead spirit lead me mm -hmm. spirit lead me oh Good morning, good morning. How are you all doing? Good morning. This beautiful, blessed morning. If my face look a little flushed, it's because I just got through cleaning it and um, putting some lotion on, so it's all kind of a little red. But good morning, good morning. How are you all doing? Spirit lead me. All right, this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. Good morning. Today we are in Proverbs 18 and 19 and then 1 Corinthians 3. So I hope y'all woke up with a praise and worship in your heart and, and ready to uh, get into the word and, and be conquerors and victors, walk victoriously in this day. Amen. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we just come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for waking us up this morning getting us on our feet, ordering our steps, Lord God, giving us the instructions and directions that we need to conquer this day and be victorious in it, giving us the chance and the opportunity to be, be able to spread your gospel, to spread the goodness of who you are, Lord Jesus, and to win souls for you, Lord God. I pray in this day you be glorified, that you be lifted up, and we lift your name higher and higher, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. And we ask that this be a day of prosperity. That this be a day of increase in every area of our lives, Lord Jesus. That you pour your essence and your fire in us, Lord. And surround us and clothe us in your essence and your fire, Lord Jesus. Giving us the energy and the strength to fulfill ministry in this day, Lord God. We want to be used by you, Lord Jesus, to be kingdom builders, to, to be able to further your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And we just thank you, Lord God, that you have chosen us to believe and trust in you, Lord God. And we glorify you and we praise you and we honor you. And we pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh. In Jesus' holy, mighty name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Bless, bless, yes. All right. So this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Proverbs 18 and 19 this morning. All right. Are we ready? Proverbs 18. Through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt, and with ign ignominy 
reproach. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked, to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. The rich man's wealth is, is, is his strong city and as an high wall in his own conceit. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. He that an answers a matter before he heareth it it is folly and shame unto him. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. him. The lot causes contentions to cease and part, part, parteth between the mighty. A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whoso findeth the wife, findeth the good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. The poor uses entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. Good morning, good morning. So which one of these really, really uh, reached out to your heart this morning? Of course, you know, 10 reached out to me. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth it, runneth into it and is safe. You know, we, 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 we can always know that we can always depend on the Lord in every area of our life and we can always run to him, you know, for, for anything that we we think we need you know a lot of times it's because we think we need it but he already knew that we were going to think we need it before we needed it so we can always run to him um you know no matter what situation circumstance or anything like that that we are in and then of course verse 15 the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge I've always, I've always been one who want to understand and, and, and always want to know, you know, it's like, I have to know all the time, you know, I've always been that person. And, and sometimes, sometimes in my life to other people, to people, uh, you know, it's come across as 
I like to argue. Sometimes I, I, I don't like ending conversations if the two people are going to walk away still confused. I love to understand and I, I love to get to an understanding, especially when it comes to um, two people who are supposed to be in a relationship, whether it be a mother-daughter relationship, mother-son relationship, you know, a wife to her husband, um, sisters to sisters. I always, always want to understand. And I've always been that way. So that, that, um, you know, reaches out to me, of course. So make sure y'all make some comments and, and, and say what's in your spirit as we are reading the words of God. This is for for, for both of us, for all of us, you know, to do this together. All right, so if you are just coming on, this is A Year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We just, we are in Proverbs and we just read chapter 18 and now we'll read 19. All right, Proverbs 19, better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hastes with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Okay, let's, let's make a note that that is said twice. <laughs> let's make a note that that is said twice. So, 10, delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion but his favor is as dew upon the grass. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. Slothfulness casts into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despises his ways shall die. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Chasten thy son, while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in the latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart, Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord 
that shall stand. The desire of a man is his kindness, and the poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware, and reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. He that wastes his father and chastes away his mother is a son that causes shame and bringeth reproach. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. An ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. Amen. So I do want to point that out again. A false with verse five and nine pretty much uh, repeats itself. A false witness shall not be unpunished and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. And then in nine, a false witness shall not be unpunished and he that speaketh lies shall perish. So it pretty much, um, you, you don't, you, you don't want to, you know, be real quick to accuse people and, and you don't know the whole story or, you know, some people just falsely accuse people of things, um, knowing that that person didn't do it and, and liars, liars. I mean, there are people who are out there that that just lie and they know that they're lying. They know that they're doing it. And so that that was that was a very interesting how he mentions that twice. But then also uh verse 17 uh reaches out to me. And y'all let me know which ones re which ones reach out because he he's he's really putting out uh, a lot of uh information uh when it comes to proverbs. So 17 he that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given will he pay him again. So you have to trust and believe and know that when you when you see the poor and the needy and, and we we we're talking homeless people even poor people even people with homes and jobs but they're they they're they're barely making it families in need when you reach your hand out to help them you are lending unto the lord he says and and god will repay you what you've put out there and and i am definitely a witness and 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 have plenty testimonies um for that to that you know so if you if if you have not allowed your heart to be a heart of giving to be a giver it, it, it's not just it's not just giving um, to your church house, tithe offerings, you know, the, 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 uh, tithe offerings, building funds, stuff like that. But it's to go out there and take care of God wants us to take care of his people. And even, even we just read, uh, you know, some few, few weeks back. How he even wants us to feed the enemy and clothe the enemy. And he even let us know what happens when, when we do that. When we feed the enemy and clothe the enemy. You know, it's like God wants us to 
go, go out there and take care of his people. You know, the people of the land, the people, because this is your, this is, this is your land. This is your region, wherever you are, wherever you are, and you are a called chosen person of God. And so you, you got to, you know, a lot of times, a lot of us are waiting for the church houses, uh, to do something, you know, and we will, we'll sit back and be like, you know, there's for five church houses down this street. How come, how come this neighborhood still looks so bad? How come, how come, you know, you know, the people are hungry. How come? And, and we're waiting for them to do it. When you are a person, a child of God called, and that's why I even, you know, said in, 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 in some, you know, a few days back, go and visit these church houses. Don't just sit in your church house. Go and visit in these church houses, get to know and, and get your, get, get, get your brothers and sisters communicating, collaborating, connecting, and go out and take care of your neighborhood. Take care, take care of the people in your neighborhood. Find out who is the poor and the needy in your neighborhood. And, and, and the Lord is saying, and you trust in the Lord that he is going to repay you. Don't, don't worry, don't worry about money. Don't worry about resources. Don't worry about, you know, how your bills are going to get paid and things like that. The Lord God will take care of you. For real. And then 18, chasten thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. So, <laughs> you know, we, we, we there parents, a lot of times you are reluctant to want to have to spank that hiney sometimes or, 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 or spank that spank them hands when they're real, real little. But he's saying, don't, he said, don't spare for his crying because you need to discipline your children while you can, you know, you need to discipline your children while you are able to. Cause like I, like I, we, it, and we, we're always going to go back to children because God really wants us to really teach and train the next generation, our children, you know, in this word, because when they get older, especially around 15, I'm telling you, they get, they get around 15 and it's like, they, they just go their own way. But you don't want them to be out there being disciplined by the system. You don't want them to go out there and be disciplined by the system. You, 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 you chastising them and disciplining them at home will be nothing compared to what that, the, the world darkness will do to them when they go out. You know, so you want to, you want to get them while you can and, and train them, train them, discipline, chastise. You want, you want to make sure that you have installed everything that you can to make sure that when they, when they go out there, they know what to do, how to respond and, and, and how to, how to depend on the Lord Jesus for themselves and allow the Holy Spirit to guide them and direct them. Amen. All right. So good morning. If you're just coming on, this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We just read Proverbs 18 and 19. And so now we'll read 1 Corinthians 3. So anyone has any comments, anything to say? I'm, I'm trying to scroll to see if anybody's speaking.
All right, 1 Corinthians 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto we were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man built upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereon upon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself, if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or of or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ. And Christ is God, God's. Okay, so there is a lot being said here. There is a, a lot being said here. Anyone have any comments on what we just read? So remember, first in First Corinthians, Paul is speaking to a church uh, in, in Corinth, in in the city Corinth, and he's he he uh, it word got to him that they were 
separating and dividing, um, uh, creating. They they this is when they they was creating different, um, what is it, cliques or sex or whatever. And Paul is breaking down. He's like, I come to you. I come to you. I come to you speaking to you as carnal and babes in Christ because he's saying as long as we have the division between us, as long as we have, then we're really not eating from the meat of Christ yet because we're still divided. As long as we have division, he says, because you're carnal. If if they're still envying and strife and divisions, then you you're walking as carnal carnal men and women. You know, we have to remove these things from out of the body of Christ. All over. And and I'm ta- I'm talking we're all over globally, all over the world. So as long as China is fighting with with United States of America, you got people of God in China. You got people of God in the United States of America. You got people of God in Russia. You got people of God in Africa. But as long as there's still divisions, we're divided. We're we're not coming together. We're not we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to to create a one mind, one voice where we we're, we're seeing the same thing, saying the same thing all over. He's saying that we're still carnal. And we walk as we walk as men. We're not walking as a spiritual being. You know, we we have to learn to come together and remove envy, strife, and divisions. And we we got to be that one. And that's why I say as long as I reach one, I know that I'm reaching millions. Because as long as you reach that one each day, one day at a time, you reach that one and we will reach the millions, you know, because we, we want, we want unity in the body of Christ all over. We are one mind, one body, and we don't want to walk, you know, uh, with car we don't want to walk we don't want to just continue to still be drinking off of the milk of christ we want to eat the meat of christ you know we want to grow and, and mature and so he even break it down he said one of us plants and the other water but it is god who gives the increase it's god who's going to raise that tree up or you know raise that person up And then verse 16, to know, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. And that word defile, that, I mean, that's in, even if you, if you watch evil, see evil, if you, if you listen to, if you listen to evil, you know, with your music. If you watch in horror movies or things like that, you're defiling the temple. Anything that you accept evil, anything evil that you accept, you are defiling the body. If you are still doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, um, you're defiling the temple. It's like you have you have to. You have to, um, you know, be very, very careful. And that's why in 18, he said, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. So if you, if you think you just know everything and you know, you think you know all and for one, we want to be removed from the system of darkness anyway. We want to be removed from, from what, what the world taught us. 
we we don't want because he said the world's for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. God God don't God don't accept the wisdom of the world. It's foolishness to him. So there's a lot of things that we're being taught growing up that are in the world system that we need to remove out of our temples. We need to remove those things out of our system. And the only way you can do that is by staying in the word and reading the word and seeing what it is that God's wisdom is and and allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and teach. And so we want we want to this is the only way we can become one mind, one body, one Christ. We can only by by staying in the word every single day. You know. Okay. We're not to chase after specific preachers or ministry. Rather, we should seek the God that they are preaching about. Because it is God who plant, God who waters, and God who promotes growth. Amen. Amen. And then, and then, and then allowing God to use you to be someone who goes out in plants and waters that that's a, that's a true call I mean that's a a very responsible calling to be to be someone who goes out there like even right now even right now when as we're reading the words of God we're planting we're planting even right now you know, the Lord God, and he's going to come in and increase. He's going to come in and increase the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom, and um, and increase every area of our life, you know? So this, this go back and reread. Go back and um, study even some more because a lot is being said um, in chapter 3. 1 Corinthians is full of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And, and you got you to gotta ask the Lord to open your ears and be ready to receive uh, what it is that you're reading when it comes to 1 Corinthians. Amen. All right. So that is the reading of the word this morning. We just got through. If you're just coming on, we just read Proverbs 18 and 19 and then 1 Corinthians 3. So go back, read it again, um, study it, look up words, you know. And just and just really allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Really allow the Holy Spirit um, to increase increase you in all the areas of your life. And just you know, just um, let the will of God, His purpose, His plans, you know download into your temple and uh and and just and we just pray you know lord god what's what's on the agenda for today you know what do you want us to do today how do you want us to do it when do you want us to do it where do you want us to do it you know these are things that you should be you know seeking seeking the face of god seeking the face of the lord and asking him to truly, truly order your steps um, and, and just have it in your heart to be conquerors and walk victoriously in Christ Jesus today. You know, have it in your heart and in your mind that nothing, nothing will stop you from being used by the Lord to further his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, you know. To be kingdom builders. Um, let him use you to be 
uh, someone who plants or someone who waters, you know, so he can come in and do the increase and, and grow and let him use you today. So if there is nothing else, no one else going to say anything, no other comments. So that's the reading of the word. I pray and hope that you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.